and just kept bouncing all the time. Obviously, it require a crap ton of farm coming up from these heroes. But we get to see the new Chen in action, and more that makes me happy about this is the fact that it's Arke playing that role as the Chen. Nerdgasm shall be had this day. Well, the burst damage she come off from Cloud Nine could also be really, really scary. With that Ogre Magi buff up on PA, she already dishes out a lot of damage as it is. Chen's heal may not be sufficient, but they will have a big army for them. Now, Cloud Nine, they kind of have to come over and check Roshan. They, have no, actually, they do have a choice for it. But if you're really going to go for Roshan, like, you wouldn't have had Arcase select like this. So more than likely, yeah, actually, look, I, I liken this from both sides. I think they've actually both figured each other out. This is going to be the conflict point. So Alliance will come up and they'll basically make a wall of heroes up here. And Cloud9 are going to try and come in and take over Chen's jungle. Now everyone's on the front lines. Misery, you can see him coming, and they're backing up. Maybe they can't fight. Axe will catch them all. Wave of Terror. They've got a lot of negative armor. Pylai low on life. Bone 7 even lower. An alliance from the high ground. They get the first blood. Beastmaster low on life. Vader will get a revenge kill into this one. But it's a double kill for Chessy. The Viper. They pump so much money into him. And now they actually go over towards Fader as well. They need more damage. They had the Howl bonus from the very, very get go. They need Fader to go down. Magic Missile not available. The Plaza Field will go, but there it is from Loda. He'll My take the kill, a three for one fight from the get-go with first blood going the way of Alliance. I mean, Ch Chessie gets a lot of items coming his way, but, okay, let's just bring it up for the sake of it. But look at the abilities which you're going to be getting up from Alliance. It's not the ones they wanted from the very, very get-go. You don't have Magic Missile available from Misery. He might get really lucky and pick up that. <laughs> the Bounty Room, which will push him towards his level two. RK, he didn't go his nuke, he did go that Holy Persuasion, he had no other choice, he was literally a right clicker during that fight. Uh, and then the Beastmaster, he ended up going down, but it was access for Admiral Baldock, he was gonna do that anyway. Leaves an interesting ward. It's not really essential to put a ward there anymore. Is he gonna axe and take the creep wave? Yeah, he is. Even hits Eternal Envy on the way, just to be a nuisance. Yeah, and I think with sweet. that, no, you need to cut down this little area of trees to make that a little bit more effective as a ward positioning. But Pylai die, he can Nightmare over on uh, over an Admiral Bulldog, but Bulldog doesn't care. He's going to get his level 2 from this creep wave as it comes under. Pylai is being a, a very big nuisance. I know this guy has got a thirst for killing. Actually, with Brain Sap, if he brings Bulldog low enough here, he potentially could kill him off. Nah, it's a, it's a level 1 Brain Sap. I take it back. Bulldog will crack level 2. And Pardo will waste a little bit of his time. Well, Envy has to use every single consumable he's got. Looks like top lane, Batride's gonna get picked off. Misery and Load are working together for that one. 4-1 is the advantage. Tornado, actually being used to give vision to do de-warding. Uh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Bring it back. Bring it back, RK. It's right here. <laughs> there we go. He found it. He wanted to get his camps back. He's still going to be able to stack up the hill trolls, and then he'll use this wild wing a little bit later on. Got to wait 30 more seconds before he can actually. Actually, no, he said screw it. The wild wing, you did your job. I'll take the dark troll summoner right now. Now they're getting napalmed up, and now he's going to run the support with him. So they got they got double ticks available. A little bit of fun also happening again with Pylide Die as well as Admiral Bulldog. He's watching the ancient area. And Bulldog, while he'll love to stack it up, Pylide's gonna make sure he can't do it. And he's just gonna run down for the rune instead. Be another bonus coming in for Bulldog. The pin came out. Pardo will have to nightmare, but he doesn't own he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it level up. He's only got his brain sap. Which is what he was trying to use to try and survive during that last engagement. I say the last engagement, the first engagement. A top lane movement coming up from Misery. Gonna find Bone 7 over on the sideline. He has Magic Missile as well as that Wave of Terror. And Bone 7 doesn't know which one to really go on. Because he can stick in Napalm. Loader won't want to give any kind of bonuses up right now. Especially with Aoi in the neighborhood. They can't really properly initiate. There's a scene Admiral Bulldog as well as like Pylite Die. These guys are like training for a marathon or something. They've been running most of the time around the map without actually being in the lanes themselves. Now there's a pull point here, which really Bane should be looking at, but he's making sure Abra Bordar can't just flash farm ancients. There's still only just a set of black dragons here. But while all this is going on, you've still got Chen 
Now she's moving up towards the top lane at exactly the same time as the Ogre Magi is backed up behind the lane. And your Batrider is there's a reason why he's backed up because he's got he has no Batrider. Beta. How's he looking for that mid lane? 11 7 up against the Viper, who's 10 7. Considering Viper at first blood, like, it is a favorable matchup for, for the Razor once you get past the early stages. Because normally Viper tries to just zone you out. And you do that by being very over aggressive with your poison. And those wolves look so boss when they're actually. Oh, look at them. Look at them. You just put napalm on them. It's like putting Vaseline on a wolf, it just looks even better. Beastmaster will go down the bottom lane in the meantime. As Misery does come in, he can't find himself a collateral kill here. Oh, he actually might find himself being a collateral kill. The Nightmare, taken off by the ball, and Misery can't get away fast enough. The Magic Missile will be there, Envy! Whoa, 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 whoa! He's gonna go down, the Creep Wave kills him off. And the experience goes the way of, of the VS. A little overcommitted while in the middle lane. Razor kills Viper first, Viper kills Razor. But that means the advantage goes the way of the Razor while up on top lane. Load of three sticky napalm charges and no real way to get himself away from this. So Bone7 will find himself with a kill up on the top lane. And Pylai die. Are they going to keep going now? Misery's on his way in. Oh, I'll take too long to get there. That's not the, that's not the team recap I want. Give me the full one, damn it! <laughs> there was more to it than that. It was across the map. All right, misery. Just hovering himself around, looking for any kind of opening. He'll buy a TP scroll, realizing he needs to be in the lanes if things go wrong, especially for Chessy. Well, up on top lane, Admiral uh, Loader. Quality blade in a stick. Hasn't built anything more. I'm wondering if he's considering a hand of Midas build for himself. It should be a Vladimir's, especially considering they're on the Dire side. They do have that big advantage. Obviously, you are still going up against the Batriders. So you can be a little bit more cautious with your warding. But they do still have that Dire side advantage. Just a slip into the pit. Now, Misery and Bulldog going to try and work together. That ball coming to the front lines. Pilot Eye gonna come back out again. And now he's in trouble. Magic missile. The axe will clean up the tree line, so there's nowhere to juke. Fader will come in for the steal, but the ball's gonna slow him down. As now Chessie makes his way in. Fader still stolen 105 points of damage, all of which he'll put into misery. But with the magic missile stun, he can't attack any of it out. The jump in will come from Envy. Chessie. One point corrosive skins helping him out. Admiral Bulldog also with a raw damage. These balls are actually doing some well. They are already doing some work. But Chessie will be able to back himself up, and with a 6 minute rune, 100% going to spawn on bottom lane. There's a DD for him. And the Batrider will take the bounty, so everyone gets bottle charges. A really good fight coming in there for, for Alliance. Pushing their advantage just that little bit further in. And also again, forcing that Phantom Assassin to get out of position. And the Beastmaster. Up for uh, up with our soul ring, so he's got a lot more mana to play around with. And should be looking to keep those ancients being stacked up a lot more than he was before. That's why he summons a new boar. That one's going to time out beforehand. He's got to do this prep work for the rest of his team to farm up while Arke still farming inside the jungle. He's only sitting at level four, however, which is not really where he wants to be. He still only have one unit. He needs more time. He needs more space. How's Lycan looking? Lowe's actually backing up a little bit. He's got his uh, Morbid Mask as well as that ring. And he's going to be sent back to base so he can pick him up as well. Okay, having to use a lot of his man to do this, however. Oh, Misery and Aoi. Two supports to find each other. Aoi will get stunned up. It's just allowing Chessie to run down the river. More than anything else. Now, Admiral Bulldog. He's here with his double paws. They can see this coming a mile away because they already had the Observer Ward there. They've only been up for a short period of time, but they could see it there. And this means that Cloud9, they can't just sit on the other side. Like, you see Pilot Eye arriving, this is instantly flagged for Alliance. They're making sure this Viper stays alive, so they get a complete tip in that mid lane. Even though it's, it's a 2-3-0 it's a Razor right now, with a 3-1 Viper. Which means Chessie is obviously having advantage, but even with that kill advantage, he's still behind in levels. As far as net worth, he's obviously ahead. That's only helping you to a bit. 
that Razor will still just catch up when he static links you up. Nazel towards mid lane, Fader overstaying his wall, but five to strike with the stun. They're more than enough damage to kill a Fader. Even if he keep his back out, he would have ticked out. So 4 9. The Viper will take another kill. And while all is going on, Lotus got more space to farm up. That's his full Vlad's done. We're eight minutes in. He'll want to buy a TP scroll as well and bring it out in the courier. Well, Admiral Bulldog, a long range initiation in from Eternal Envy. Coming a little bit too far back behind the tower now. They will want to get in there for Roshan. The Firefly from Bone 7 with a haste rune. He's got last two available on Chessie. Doesn't want to be part of this. Drag him up on top of the hill or drag him back to the bane. There'll be a follow-up stun from Maui, and the brain set damage is already triggered. So the Viper will get picked off. It's a haste rune. There's nothing. There was nothing Alliance to even prepare for, and they couldn't prepare to save for him at that point. Just realized he was dead. Now the push will come into the tier one tower now in the top lane. Vlad's still not there. It's arriving on the courier. But that does mean now the aura is increased. The Hellbear's there, the Wolf's there, they bring the tower down to a third of its life points. The new creep wave will arrive too. And Danny Dam, I just want to give you props, man. That Wolf Tail looks amazing. That's his, that's his set, by the way, if you don't know. That's Danny Dam's set. Right, seven back to his farming. Trying to get to this Blink Dagger as quickly as he possibly can. Not an easy task. As Chen goes back to his farming too with RK Boots, he has level 5 now, almost level 6. So he grabs up a new creep, getting rid of that, uh, that Hellbear. So he can make his army of the undead. I'm interested to see if RK now just tries to, like, flash farm an Ags. Because normally you get a mech. The Viper, he got Ring of Aquila, he got Treads. And with Chessie's start, he could actually build the mech so you can, you can rush the Ags upgrade. But then again, at the same time as, as a Chen, you don't really have a lot of armor, so you want to have the mech An anyway. Regeneration. Oh, they found one. Pile I die, a nightmare a over on loader. Nightmare. He just stands there and waits, but with Lycan Wolf form <laughs> being triggered, he'll go in and fight up against Roshan as quickly as they possibly can. Medallion of Courage is already up for Misery, and the double board's also attacking. The only way you can get a kind of rebuttal is a kill in the mid, but then again, Fader. He's gonna get slowed up by this Viper Strike and Chessie trying to force the issue. He's losing his damage, but now the Troll Trap, the Set of Blast, Chen has his nuke available. Not a lot of man to really use it though. He does have his Arcane Moose gonna try and send Chessie back. How much damage Magic want? He doesn't get him out in time. Admiral Bullock has Roar. He's looking towards Fader. He started the animation for it. But the Aegis Maul has already been taken up by Lycan. And they'll just move themselves down towards the bottom tier one tower. And this is where it's a better way to get money, not just farming up in the jungle. You farm heroes, you take towers. That's where you get your Moolot. Same thing for Batrider though, but... He starts with farming the jungle so he can get this item. Then he farms heroes. A loader is ready to push now to the tier 1 tower on bot lane. While in middle lane, there's two heroes TPing in. One from either side. Chessie returns towards the mid lane. That is Fader, and the Bane will just leave. Bottom but the bottom tower is going to get forced attack. out now. Like and Wolf, Boar's House. We're actually racking up a lot of aura stacks as well. Once the inner beat starts to arrive for the Beastmaster, then the aura from the VS starts also getting a little bit higher. And the Howl even gets leveled up more than one. The pushing power is going to be immense. And RK could be looking attack. for Alpha Wolves as well as Ancient Radiance Creeps. And everything fallen. just gets massively buffed. Top tier 1 tower is probably brought down by Eternal Levy. Going for the Battle Fury build on, on the Phantom Assassin. That's the build that's been favored by Black. Top tower is under attack. From VG Gaming. Paladise trying to have a bit of a scout. He'll notice the Chen's still there. Misery, the man, wanting to defend up on top lane. They get, get the extra TP coming in, which is Admiral Bulldog. But well, the bottom pressure is still there from Loader and Arke. Trying to beat into that tier 2 tower. Now, Bone 7, he's going to get his initiation in again. It's the same problem for Alliance last time. Loader triggers his ultimate form and just leaves Arke to die. And drag the walls back out again. They'll lose the Satter. Vader. I'm waiting for the Viper Strike from Chessie. Yeah, he's gonna do it. Unfortunately for Chessie, he'll need a lot more help to bring down bring down Fader, that Viper Strike. Only level one at the moment. The damage output is not good enough for him. Pretty gonna do something about losing RK though. And he is gonna build into the into the mech, of course. But I wasn't quite so sure about Bulldog TPing out of that. All would have taken was a roar the second Batrider jumped in. They could have turned and tried to fight him. And that would have saved the Chen, got his hand of God off. 
And if there was another hero in trouble, then it would be a sandbag. That's also the reason why Bone 7 focused over on the Chen. He realized if he just went on the Lycan, the Lycan would survive long enough that the Chen sandbag would do its job. And the last two would be wasted. So is said he went a different path. We're just going to go for a Necro unit build, so no BKBs coming up from him. Must be draining out this mana. Of course, that was one of the problems we were flagging before with, uh, with the Ogre Magi. Able to get yourself up to wonderfully high levels and you're buffing up everybody, but at the same time, once that Naga Diffusal Blade arrived, you had no joy. A triple smoke. Coming up from Alliance. Chessie's hovering around as well. I'm going to try and have a crack at Fader. The, uh, the uh, Hawk is actually doing a lot of good vision work here, and they're going to bring all five heroes in. So Fader already, already uses the plasma field, which means now VS can feel a lot more comfortable in coming in. And Misery, well, he finds him. Wave of Terror supports TP in from Bone 7, and Misery is a long way away from being where he wants to be, which is with the rest of his Alliance team. But they'll trigger the Howl, and they'll try and bring down the T1 tower. No fortification available. So even the minion damage will finish off this tower. Really even the heroes to decide to go for a gank, but they can't really initiate in just yet. The sentry ward is down. The fader in, in his invis rune. It's just not possible to be found out. They leave an observer ward behind. The hawk gets chipped down. It's like a lion's gonna try and keep pushing. A new creep Radiant now with uh, two centaurs in the troll. So a lot of control coming up from Arke. And Misery just needs to get a clean bar. It's only a level one swap, but still. Any initiation in from Bone 7 kind of either ha it has to be on Misery. Because he'll go for someone and Misery will just swap him out. And he knows this too. That's why Bone 7 is not just jumping in and grabbing the nearest hero he can find. Because there's no advantage to be gained from it. The advantage does come with, the, with Ogre Magi taking out the top tower. And then he's still continuously farming up on the bottom lane. Getting closer and closer towards that Battle Fury. 350 ish gold away from having it too. So, RK. Being very close towards Pylite Eye, but then again, there's, there's no initiation coming in from the Bane. Not unless he's going to have a Blink Dagger up and running. And now he's still getting a lot of space up on that top lane to get experience. Not coming for him, and I think at this point he just thinks as long as I can hit level 11, then this is 100% this is worth it. And he's got more support now on the way. Bone 7, Pile I Die, both Dyer's moving up. Lycan just goes back to pick up the level 2 Necro units, and he'll come to defend that tier 2 tower, with Bone 7 also in the lane. Lighter's gonna be a little bit more mindful. But they could just try and TP and defend him. Chessie seems to want to have not a bar of anything right now. He's just too busy farming Dyer's up his Agon Scepter in the mid. Attack. And Loader will come in to defend this. The Wolves start doing the scouting for him. So he knows what he's up against. So he'll find Pilot Eye as well as Aoi 2000. The other wolf out will scout out Bone 7. Didn't get the attack in in time. Misery. Well, he's going to swap and stun. He needs the vision though. Wave of Terror. They gave him the vision with the four staff away. Aoi. Beautiful play by him. Realizing where that fog of war was. And he got lucky as well because the wolf, it could have been running a little bit lower than that. And it would have given the vision just to get the instant stun off, but Dyer's he was hoping that Wolf was on the wrong side of the tree line, which it was. Gets himself out. An article of faith. Okay, now up to level eight. Now he picks up that bounty rune. There's still no buckler for him just yet. Means that mech is a very long way away. Well, and again, this is one way to get there. Double stuns with the war stomps. Fade up. Raw gonna go on him, and the razor goes down. And now it's just a simple rotation in from a troll warlord. And then they go into Pylai Die with a Chen Yuke. More kills coming the way here of Alliance. Racking up the cash, and there's the buckler now arriving. But Alliance don't want to wait for this. They're going to try and push straight down mid lane towards that tier 2 tower. And they will be able to bring it down quite easily. The Ignite's going to slow them down a little bit. I know he's trying to add some pressure towards that bottom tower, but again, this is like game number one. Cloud9 are trying to find a, tra a trade off which they're really happy with. Which in this case is a Battle Fury Envy. He attacks hard, he attacks fast, and the Ogre Mishai is able to give him the extra buff ups required. It's only one point up in Bloodlust right now, but it all really comes down to the multicast anyway. So we need to have him up at level, level 11. 
Our level 3 Necro units up for loader. Won't be long until Roshan. Yeah, just under 30 seconds now. Double damage. More bounty gets to be claimed. Invisibility. Oh, Faded with his DD rune. He's also going. We've got mass ags today. We'll have an ag for the Viper. We'll have an ag for the Ogre. We'll have an ag for the, for the Razor. And the last agonyms will be uh, going the way of the Chen. If he can get to it, of course. But the right, right, this game is going. And I think it's kind of possible because Cloud9 is still have a lot of fighting potential. Because they're not really taking these fights with uh, with the found up Eternal Envy. He can pick up an Ogre Club right now and start prepping towards the BKB. But he also realizes if Cloud9 lose a big team fight, Alliance push high ground and take mid racks. I'm talking like big team fight being 5 0. That's, that's big team fight. And they will push high ground and take the racks. You've got two auras coming up right now between Bulldog and Misery. And then you add Lycans on top of all of that. You can add whatever Chen's managed to pick up. And you got Lycan himself with his Wolves and Necro units. That's how, you, that's how you bring down Talos with that hero. And Alliance know what they want to do. Oh, the Wolf trying to go for the body block right now. He's got it. And that bottom time to get the roar off. Loader controlling Pylite die on the top lane. Well, ensure, ensure he does go down. His, his mission was this ward. His mission was the aggro ward inside the, inside the uh, die jungle. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Still not the trade-off they're really searching for. Now, owie. They're picking him out in the bottom lane. Misery's like, yo, we can kill him. And Lord's like, sure, I'll TP in. Like him will form. Misery needs a swap, needs the vision, the wave of terror. Owie's already backed up at the right time. Now, there's no tower here. But the vision from Loader, well, he killed up to him. I will try and buff him up, but now you'll see just how quickly you lose your mana on this poor little Okamajai. He, he has enough time for one more stun. And then triggers his stick charges. But the bounty rune to be taken. Roshan, a little bit too far away. Minute and 15. But we'll leave the Beastmaster Hawk behind. While towards the middle lane, that rider continuously farming up, taking care of the creep wave. Getting 2k gold after finishing up both Blink Dagger and the Four Staff. The yeah, action gets to continue now with uh, more people heading towards the bottom lane. Well, we've got ourselves a bit of a uh, a chill moment. Want to let, every let everybody know we've got more action on the Join Out live streams right now. If you want to tune into the Gigabyte Challenge, Mon Capitalist. Uh, is casting that one over on Join Under Red's channel and on Join Under Community. It's fine up tonight. We have Drag and Drop doing the casting for the uh, the We Play tournament. So you can catch those matches. You can find the live stream. It's just at joinedunder.com. Very easy to find. Top right hand corner. They have countdowns and viewer numbers. They're all our JD live streams. So Dyer's please tune in, support them. They're doing some awesome games and hopefully you're enjoying the coverage as well for the D2CL. Looking forward to the land files and Tree Mac Book Arrest. So now, back to the action. Tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. No way Cloud9 want to go high ground against this. Not a chance at all, I hell. There is no advantage they can gain to go up against this. They use the fortification to try and buy themselves some time to just get a straight tower trade. Now, Alliance will back up. They know Roshan's there because the Hawk's on the, uh, the, the Hawk. The little Sparrow. More of a Cockatoo. I was watching and uh, saw the spawn up. Ag uh, Agon Inceptor is now up for Fader. These big items are going to start to arrive. Ogre is still going to be a little bit behind his. Obviously because he's a support, he doesn't farm that fast. But Alliance are getting a big injection of money now as they bring down Roshan. And they do it rather quickly as well. Uh, yo, Aegis, loader. <laughs> it's a very narrow choke point to try and still get through. <laughs> they grab himself for double damage rune and having his level 2 ultimate. This is almost a uh, cause for a smoke. And what's coming in? Don't you believe? It's a schmuck. Oh, a schmuck. What crafty? <laughs> Bone Seven's trying to farm up inside the Dire Jungle right now. Reliant on those BT to get himself away to safety if he can blink and get out. And having to run across the entire map. MV now gonna have to TP. Whoa. Actually, they cancel that. They turn around, they go for the raw. Envy's gonna jump in. Nice cleave damage going for Misery for the mech charge and the hand of God. Trying to keep Misery alive, forcing Envy to work hard. And then with the war stop, now in comes with. Yeah, yes, you got the double war stop on Envy and Fader. There will be a TP out, no troll trap. And not enough damage from Alliance. But it's still the PA and the Batrider being dropped for the price of the Vengeful Spirit. 
That's a huge event here in the way of, of the uh, of the uh, of the alliance. It's like a stutter, stutter, stutter. Decent gold. Better on the experience. And I'll skyrocket them up a long, long way. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Now the pressure will come. Well, Ekra gets still up for a little bit longer. They can cause some problems for Fader, but the plans of Philly's able to drag most of the creep way back Dyer's behind the tower. Bottom tower has been they're denied. fine with that. Well, Chessie have come in. Let's just smoke on the courier. Treads. Oh, blink up. Bone 7. Courier Hunter Extraordinaire has a 4 staff and then 2 attacks at least. Oh, he's gonna need 3. And he won't be able to reach him in time and now he's realizing maybe not the greatest thing in the world. Wave of Terror and Misery. That's a level 2 swap for him. He's just out of range of the Batrider. At the same time though, Loader is right behind him. But he can't, he can't control the Batrider. 4 staff's about to come off cooldown. They're just wasting time chasing him. But okay. And so good to actually see a reason to bring Chen back into the game. Especially for him to play it. That side movement, just the trolls coming up from this side. That mid kill. One of those just easy chain stun moments where he makes it look easy. Uh, TP out by Fader. Wave of Terror will scout him out, but at the last moment. Actually, maybe it's a little bit off because Misery's still checking the corners. So yeah, I didn't actually spot him. But Misery now up to uh, 2k gold over on this VS. Wondering if 4 staff or if he wants to go a little bit more like the Aoi style build. Having both Blink Dagger as well. Oh, Chessie, you're going to get attacked now. Well, that reveals the fact there's a Sentry Ward there. I still just want to see RK grab an Ancient. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. You got everything else you need to pick up a point boost now, okay. Under attack. You're nearby, you're fine. Tier 2 tower's gonna go down as well. The Lycan now building into that Assault Curass. After already having his level 3 Necro units. RK. Well, he finds Fader. Just slows fallen. him down with the Centaurs. He's used both the stuns. Pretty low on mana, but the RK boots. He's actually thinking to say, please coming close. Easy. But now Bone 7. Looking for that opening. It's difficult to do though, and now he actually might be, yeah. A little bit too far up. Dyer's the four staff away from him. He was on the chase, but the Firefly Vision let him see everyone that was coming in from the side. Now BS. Misery gets the swap. And both seven said, there's no there's no Firefly away. There's no extra movement speed because the Viber Strike shut him down. And Misery takes a big kill. Three kills, one death, and eleven assists coming in there for Misery. Fourteen out of the sixteen kills of Alliance. Heavy support lifting. Heavy, heavy support lifting. Apple Bulldog is going blink. They can now going to search for that blink initiation. They have their Viper Strike. Obviously, snagging himself to lose. Going to get him off a little bit. And the Agonist is rushing now off. Bad Rider, go look for that initiation. The link from Fader. The Wolves, it was a mini body block, but she bought him the space here. When well, they're looking to come out, they bought back on the Bad Rider. So they definitely want to try and fight this RK. This creep army is burning a little bit, and now five to strike with the troll traps. They force up away from the war stomp, and Envy jumps in, trying to go on Admiral Bulldog. Already the Bat Rider has had his die back. The VS swapping Envy around. He just can't find the space. Chen Yu's him arcane. Too many multicasts. He will go down, but Misery blinks it, focuses on Fader, and Lord's just like, all right, hit on Fader, and you'll bring him down. The double kill goes the way. Could have actually just said how. Uh, and they're going in deeper. They'll go for the range racks. The melee to follow. Admiral Bolo is trying to keep his aura in range. Misery from blinking away trying to evade the attack. Now Razor will buy back. They still need that range Radiance racks gone. The melee racks are going to lose the Chen army at this point. So Alliance have to bail out. They have no other choice. Well, they have no problem with it either. The Lycan now with the AC recipe. Almost enough to buy the Hyperstone. Is there anything else on the courier? Nope. But there's 3.1k gold over on the on, on the Beastmaster. And with that, that's going to be building into his level 2 Necro unit. It's a lot of money coming in there to Alliance. They now push their advantage of 8,000 in the team net worth. And they have the, their exper experience advantage back after what seems to be an attorney. That's almost 20 minutes with Cloud9 having that advantage. All right, RK. I, w I still really wish he spent his money before this. Is it, she is he? Yes! Ogre Club. Then point booster. 
It's coming. It's coming. You know it. Fader keeps his farm going. He might have to start Eye of the Storm farming up these Ancients. He's got no other real choice to do it quick enough. Yeah. It's a low cooldown anyway. It's only a minute. But just flagging the fact that like, these Ancients of, of the Dire side now have to be the most important thing for Cloud9. Like, you have to know the timing of Alliance. Especially like, RK is getting bigger. You already know they're going to try and farm up the Ancients. They're looking for just any kind of pickoff. Fiend's Grip from Pilot Eye is just itching to be used. And they're going to smoke up on Alliance. And well, there's your smoke break. Loader came up. We are, of course, during night time, so the vision is rather restricted. The wolves scouting out the regeneration rune up on the top river. And they blink down Misery. Swap back, got to go for the sun over on Vader. There's no altar from him. The raw to follow up. So rather tanky kind of Some self fella. But the war stop, or the hoof stop, war stop, is there from the centaur. They're able to get that one down. Pilot eyes in no man's land, but he's trying to remain here with Eternal Envy to try and bring down the tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. But they have to come back to defend the mid. But then again, there's no Razor. His buyback's on cooldown, so they've actually lost mid racks. The Korean way is going to push in, the Howl will be triggered. And right now, Alliance can either go for the GG push, or they can go for a second Rax. And they're going to go for the secondary Raxing. The bottom tier 2 tower might go down, but the damage output of Alliance is just through the roof. They got everybody. The whole kick and caboodle moving into Cloud9 base. And Cloud9 cannot fight for another 35 seconds. There's just no choice in the matter. So instead, they try and force the trade-off. Eternal Levy, though. He's got to know that Alliance won't care. You bring down Radiant one set of racks or a tier 3 tower. Attack. Up against Megas, it makes no difference. He has to come back and try and fight this. Radiant but his money isn't good enough. Now he jumps in, gets some good crits over on Arcane, but the wall stops too quickly. They walk over towards Eternal Envy. He triggers up the mana stuff to buy himself some space and then blinks away to safety, but the Alliance, there's too many of them. They're just too strong at this point in the game. The multi on the load, three of them actually, they bring down loader. But Admiral Bulldog the front lines with Misery. The Raw will obliterate him. The buybacks are coming out <laughs> thick and fast. But the top rack's not dead just yet. RK and Chessie, they're trying to finish the job right now. The range rack's on the sideline. RK trying to send the Viper back in the middle of the Fiend's Grip. Just unable to do so. Blink away by Misery. And the melee ranks is the only thing that remains alive right now for Cloud9. But as we saw in the last game and what this patch has actually promoted, is the never give up approach. Because it only takes a couple of kills and you get yourself closer. That XP exchange is only a little bit going the way of Alliance. Because there was a lot of buybacks that had to come out from that, so the gold change was actually quite high. But even then, it starts to level out a little bit more. So for now, Alliance waited out. It's, 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 it's almost here! They need more agents though. They've only got one black dragon down here. And this Chen's got two points up in hand of God, so technically he could take two agents with this. Well, oh, Sakura picking up as well. Shiva's guard for Fader. Oh, after one more plastic field into this creep wave, you'll have it. Well, Bone 7. Actually stuck on the cliff next to Roshan. This wasn't for a de-warding thing, it wasn't for a warning thing. There's a Lycan Wolf in there, right on top of Bone 7. Illusion. And now Eternal Envy will come in. He'll try and be fast about this. The board's going to reveal the fact that you 100% know the Flame Break way too far away to get the burst damage on the ball. So the Illusion Rune also triggered. I think they wanted to try and just get in there, use the Mana Style to tank up Roshan. And they kill him off quickly and get out with the Aegis. But it's not going to happen. And I hope your body is prepared, everybody. The Black Dragon, RK will now have next level Chen available. There's even the Sanj coming out here for Misery. So building into an even tanky Vengeful Spirit. And, whoa, he decides to take the Granite Golem. The Spell Immune. Well, so they also cut out the Batrider with a roar. They had the vision for it. There's a big Granite Golem on the way down. And load up with the Medallion of Courage coming into man. That Granite Golem is so damn slow. He's got 2.3k in the life points. Not to mention all the buff ups he's getting. They put Frost out. Look at the armor on this guy. And now Maki will come up and take the Black Dragon as well. So he's got splash damage coming up from the Black Dragon. Every try to keep that split push going as long as he possibly could. But the ancient army is moving over for Arke. 
So he's, it's his own frost armor. It's because the Ogre Frost Mage is buffing up the Black Dragon as well as his uh, Ancient Granite Golem. Obviously because there's no Lich in this game to give you that buff up. But they're coming towards the top lane. They'll want to push in through the mid. Keep the creep wave going down there. The crazy thing is, I don't even know if they can kill off the Granite Golem. Like, PA is the only one that will come close with a physical DPS. But... Beyond that, the Ancients have arrived. And we will mop up the walls with a 1300 crit. And now Loader. The Mass Necro books come, the Howl as well, Loader. A lot of damage, remember, it's just his Aegis anymore. They drag back Misery with the Lasso in the Fiend Script. No swapping, no disabling. The, the Blade Miller from Chessie, minimal, 30 minutes in. Loader still getting stunned up. There's a lot of multicasts coming up here from Aoi, but he's completely out of mana. Triggers the Arcane Boots. Envy back the front lines, but the Ancients are doing the work. They're bringing down the racks. Another multicast to happen. But it doesn't really matter at this point in the game. The buyback will come out from PA. Back in towards the mix, but Aoi slowed down by that Viper Strike. And while Fader, they get beaten down. They're still going to be Viper with the double kill. It's Mega Creeps. Three heroes on the sidelines. And Alliance, they came this close to winning game number one. And Cloud9 triumphed over them. But in this game, this game is the set of Whoa, 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 whoa. Damage output too much. Mercy. Not granted. A triple kill for Eternal Envy. And now the Nightmare will be there. One last hit for the road from Eternal Envy. But the GG call is officially out now. So the game is over and the game belongs to Alliance. A 1-1. The teams potentially can remain locked in the D2CL. If you want the details for it, go to joinedda.com and you can find the group standings there. Or you go to d2cl.org to, to, to see the standings there. But that'll wrap up Cloud9's games. They go 7-7 as their final result. With that loss, it opens up the potential for a, well, still a four-way tie to get yourself into the playoffs. The only teams which are confirmed uh, that the pretty much book rest, which is Team Empire, they went 9-3 out of the group stage, so they have a, a free ticket directly to Dreamhack Book Arrest. Uh, team Tinker is the other team, which is confirmed to go into the playoffs. The other ones who are battling it out to get into that into that final part of the playoff, Power Rangers, Na'Vi, Cloud9, the Alliance, VP, and Fnatic all stand a chance still in the competition. And we're coming into our last week of competition as well for the D2CL. It's great. Even the US playoffs will begin next week. Where we have uh, Navi and A, Sneaky Nixon Tassins, Pain Gaming, and not today, battling it out from that part of the bracket. But for now, thanks for watching everyone. VODs be uploaded onto this animation channel as well as YouTube.com forward slash join Dota and go to the other channels which are already streaming at other games. So we have uh, the Gigabyte Challenge currently underway over on uh, Join Dota Red, and we'll have Join Dota on Join Dota Community. We have the We Play matches as well. So enjoy all the Dota, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for more action. As far as that schedule goes, well, it's an action-packed one. We play Cloud9 versus Tinker, and Navi US will be going up against Evil Geniuses with the Gigabyte Challenge, of course, starting up at 18 CEST, where Team Rio Tinker Arena will also be playing in that one. So keep your eyes peeled for all that one. And ESL, the last last final, will be up complexly going up against Nick Nick's Assassin starts at 23 CEST tomorrow. So 18 CEST, check out Join Dota. You'll find all your, all your action there. And we'll see you next time on the live stream.